All right, welcome everybody to the first presentation in the TraderLine annual uh, trading conference. We're super excited to have Patrick Walker, a yeah. veteran can slim trader to kick things off. Uh, couldn't be more excited to have him uh, you know, start things off for us today. Um, one of my favorite educators with the can slim system. So Patrick, thanks so much for being here and welcome. Thank you, thank you all for having me. I just, um, I have to compliment everybody that's here and I'm not saying that to praise you. You're committed to learning things. You're committed to getting better. While a lot of people are out horsing around, the people that are in here right now are working hard to get better. And I think that's really important. I'd like to give you just a little bit of background about me. Then we're going to get to the charts, okay? Years ago, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri originally. I've lived in quite a few different places in the United States. Taught on the university level, okay? Taught advanced level classes, strategic planning, et cetera. I, I love teaching, which was one of the biggest reasons we started Mission Winners, was to educate, not to just give ideas. Anybody can give ideas, but to educate why. As I was telling the gentleman earlier, to know that two plus two equal four is knowledge. To know why two plus two equal four is knowledge that's applicable to other situations. So what are we doing? We're sharing knowledge. And I know everybody else that's gonna come after me doing this, doing the same thing. Not anybody can give a stock idea, but why? And then you can apply it. Just to let you a little bit of know about me, as I said, I taught on the university level. I taught advanced level classes. My, one of my finals was 24 pages typed. And it wasn't because I was a jerk. It was because I had high expectations. And the same thing's true with mission winners. The grade that you get, all right, is, is a monetary grade. And it's a very important grade. And so it's important, it's important to really approach this business in a serious manner. I can't stress that enough. So I have a question for all of you. You don't have to answer, but this is for you. What are your motives? This is for you, okay? This talk isn't about me. This talk is about you. And I really mean that from my heart. What are your motives? Why are you doing this? Why are you interested in investing, okay? To make a lot of money, okay, fine. But are there other motives there? Is it to support a family? That was one of my motives, to help support a family, to help support my mom. Is it... Is it, yeah, let's really get after it. Is it the challenge of doing this? And all those things are viable answers. But I encourage you, I'm asking you, please don't focus on the money. Focus on good trade. And I hate to use the word trade, but I'm going to use it. Trade or investing execution. Tra practice that. Really commit to that. I can't, I can't stress that enough. For years, I was an IBD meetup co-leader, and I would get up on the stage, and I would talk and challenge the people, why are you doing this? Answer that question, and make sure, again, that it's not about the money. So I got started in this business, and I was there for the crash of, believe it or not, I was there for the big crash in 87, 89, right? I still remember that. It was wicked. I was managing money back then, but I have to give credit, and I'm going to do it right now. I want to give credit to some people that had a profound impact on me back then and then later on. The first one was Martin Zweig, and I had the great pleasure of meeting him and talking with him several different times. And credit where credit's due, listening to Martin Zweig and his input helped me move all of my managed accounts out of the market several weeks, two weeks before the crash of 87. The market was showing deterioration. You could see it in the price and volume action of the stocks. So we moved out. Martin Zweig, another guy, Bill O'Neill. I've met Bill O'Neill a couple of times, actually sat down and had lunch with him. Bill O'Neill had a tremendous impact on me. And I'll be very honest, of everybody, if it wasn't for Bill O'Neill, I don't think I'd have done it. But I give credit where credit's due. I, I really mean that. Another individual that I met, and this isn't name dropping, okay? I'm trying to share just part of my background, and I hope that's why you're here, aspiring to acquire knowledge. Ed Sakota. If you don't know who Ed Sakota is, read the book Market Wizards and read about Ed Sakota and his returns. Ed Sakota is a trend following guy. I'm a trend following guy. When you see the numbers that he's put up, it's staggering. And I remember talking to him at a meeting in, in San Francisco, and it was interesting. He had on bifocals. And so I'd make a statement. It's just him and I talking. And he tilted his head back like this. I'd make a statement on price movement. 
And you go like this, why do you think that is? I'll ask you that. When you're looking at a chart and you see it doing something, you should ask yourself, why is that happening? Why is that happening? There's a tremendous amount of information in the charts. Learn to read them. Can't stress that enough. Anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way. Mark of Wizards, a couple of books I recommend that you read. I would recommend that you read How to Make Money in Stocks by Bill O'Neill, okay? I would recommend that you read the books by Mark Menervini. They're very good books, very good books. I, I stress that, especially his first one, which is called Trade Like a Stock Market Wizard. Good book. And the things, it's substantial information. Another book that I would recommend are some of the books by John Boyk. I've got one sitting here on the desk, Monster Stocks. You can say, why are you bringing these things up? To help you, to help you get better. Also, finally, I would recommend, and I've got it sitting here, Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. It is a, I've met him two years ago. It's a wonderful book. But the best part about that book is the interview with Dr. Van Tharp. Dr. Van Tharp is either a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I forget which. And he trains and coaches professional investors on how to get better. And that's probably why you're here. I mean, this, folks, this isn't about me at all. This is about you, okay? How can you get better? That's why you've committed your time to this. So I encourage you, the book, Mark of Wizards by Jack, and by the way, know this, I don't get anything, you know, I have no relations here with this stuff, okay? It's not, I'm not endorsing, it's to help you. But not only read, study the last chapter in that book, Mark of Wizards with the interview with Dr. Van Tharp, psychologist training people, coaching people. Why are they doing this? Mindset. And one of the big things is this, not focusing on the money. You go, what? No. I'm encouraging all of you, don't focus on the money because it will cloud your reasoning and it will cloud your judgment. Focus on good, uh, we're talking stocks, Focus on good stock selection. Focus on good stock investment management. If you can do those things, the money will follow. And you can say, oh, really? No, really. I've been through a lot of high pressured situations in my life for a long, my dad died when I was a young guy. And basically then I had a family of six that I was helping to support and I was helping to support my mom. So yeah, was it pressure? Yes. Why? We lived off our investing profits. I didn't have any wealthy relatives, okay? It was a case of making it happen. Some of you have a similar situation like that in your life. I get, I get messages from my people. Hey, you know, I need help with this. I need help with this. And as I stated before, that's the reason why we started Mission Winners. Now let's talk acronym for a minute. You all know the acronym canceling from Bill O'Neill, and it's a great one. As I stated, Bill O'Neill changed my life. Tell you that right up front. What a nice guy too. Just a I remember one of the times I saw him, he goes, hey there, just, just a good old boy, you know, great guy. Mission winners. What does mission stand for? And this is important. This is for you. Markets. The MN, mission winners. Markets. You've got to have good markets, folks. Don't argue with the markets. Markets, industries, the I. You look at the big picture market, then you narrow it down to the industry group that it's in. And this is gonna make sense to you in a minute. Sector, okay, sector. Markets, industry, sector, stocks in the group, the second S. I, institutional support. You've got to have other people besides yourself buying the stock. We can't move the stock, folks. There's gotta be more people involved with it. O, outstanding management, outstanding product, outstanding service. They are the best in their field. Focus on the, the cream of the crop. I'll give you an example. This is what I've said at the IBD meetups for years. Nobody does what Google does as good as Google does it. And I'm not endorsing Google. That's not my point. But it's a fact. I'm going to do an internet search. Oh, I'm going to go to Bing. No, you're not. You're going to go to Google. Okay. You're going to do shopping online. Nobody does what Amazon does as good as Amazon does it. You get my point? Over and over. Companies like that, that are the cutting edge in their fields, the best of the best, focus on those. Outstanding management, outstanding product, outstanding service. And you can say, well, then Pat, what does the N stand for? And for me, 
the N is the most important letter in mission winners. And this is my psychology background. N, never say never. I will tell you something, team. This up here between your ears is the most important asset that you have. Take good care of it and focus on positive situations. You know what to look for. Markets, industry, sector, stock, institutional support, outstanding management, outstanding product, outstanding service. You combine all those things together. Never say never. You know what to look for. Stick with it. Stick with it. I really stress that. And another important point I have to make up, turn off the noise. So what? What do you mean by that? I encourage you, don't inundate yourself with too many entries of ideas, not stock ideas, just constantly surfing, constantly looking. In fact, I'll be very honest. I have a TV in my office, but I don't have on, I'll tell you the truth. I don't have on like Fox TV and that's not knocking Fox TV. Okay. I don't have any of that stuff on during the day and it's not against Fox. It's not, it's not against MSNBC, nothing like that. Turn that off. Not, don't be ignorant of news but turn all these things off during the day. There's too much high angst and high anxiety in the news. It always seems like the end of the world, which can lead to negative thought processes. And that's not good. That's important. Another key point I have to make, and this is my psychology background, all right? You have many assets. One of them may be money, right? And hopefully it is. Hopefully it's family. Hopefully it's health. Hopefully it's faith. All these things are important. Protect the assets and definitely protect your mental health. Don't dwell on the negative. Dwell on the positive. Good quote, I never met a wealthy pessimist. There's opportunities out there. Every day there are opportunities out there. Look for them. So let's get down to that. So now you've got a little bit about my background and you've got a little bit about my motives why we started Mission Winners was to help people. And you can say, again, that's all. I'm, no, this is fun. I love teaching this stuff. I, again, I've been teaching, I used to te teach outdoor survival skills at higher elevations and where lives depended on it. I know what it's like to be above the lightning looking down on it. I know what it's like to hold somebody's hand like this so they don't fall off a cliff. And now I'm gonna change gears and share something with you, okay? This is part of my background. You go, what the heck does this have to do with stocks? Really not with stocks, but if you get hurt bad, you can't do much. And, and Richard's probably going, what's he gonna go with? <laughs> right, Richard? You'll like this, folks. It's called the two-man grip. And I'm gonna show it to you right here. Take a look at this. You see this? This is the two-man grip. A lot of people hold hands like this or like this. No. If you need to really hold on to somebody because their life depends on it, and I've been there, okay? I've been there up in the mountains. This way. This is the two-man grip. What's it mean? I can let go, but you don't. Or you can let go, but I don't. That's the two-man grip. You can say it has nothing to do with stocks. Well, it has to do with life. And you know what? It indirectly has to do with stocks the two-man grip. That's part of the reason why you're here, is to get better, knowing that I need to improve various its skill sets. Two-man grip. I'll pull you up, you'll pull me up. And that's part of a team. That's one of the bigger reasons why Richard is doing what he's doing, and doing a great job, by the way. It's not about him, okay? If you've noticed, it's not about, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. It's no, no, I'm doing things to help other people. And that is a noble and actually positive trait. So com I commend you for what you do, your whole team for what you do. Help other people. Let's talk stocks now for a minute, okay? We're gonna get down to it. You got a little bit about me, what we've got going on. So here's the big question. <clears throat> this cuts right to the chase, folks. You wanna buy stocks that go up in price. Why does a stock go up in price? I'm not saying that to be funny, I'm not saying that to be cute. This is what I used to teach on the stage for IBD meetups every month on a big stage. Why? You could say, well, Pat, um, you know, this is a company with great earnings. Uh, oh, no, they have, they have great sales. They have really good return on equity. 
their profit margins are really high, okay? They have an outstanding product or an outstanding service. They do things better than other people. These are the reasons I'm buying stocks or why a stock goes up in price. That's all great, but let's pull all the way back and I'll ask again, why does a stock go up in price? And it's really simple. Remember this, it goes up in price because there are more buyers than sellers. And you say, oh, come on. No, let's be pragmatic. And that's what we talk about all the time at Mission Winners. Let's be pragmatic. Why does a stock go up in price? There's more buyers than sellers. We want to find stocks that have that, don't we? So now let's nuts and bolts it. We've talked about psychology. We've talked about what's going on between your ears. And I will say this, and I'm speaking from my heart. If you're ever going through a really rough time, and I've been through that. I remember my best friend diagnosed with cancer and he died. He was dying. I had to quit. I had to quit and be with him. Priorities. Things happen. Do that for yourself. It's very, very important. So let's talk. By the way, I've got three hours to talk, right, Richard, you say? I got three? Richard's not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got as much as you want, Pat. Love it. By the way, folks, Richard's a great guy and does a great job, but you got to have fun too, all right? Take this very seriously, but laughter is a good thing, okay? I mean, it's, I remember I was training with a buddy of mine and we had a stock and it, and it fell and we were down like 12,000 bucks in, I think, two minutes. And we're talking on the phone and I go, Steve, I go, gosh, look at that. And this is all he says. That's not good. <laughs> and that's it. And we laughed. We left. It's not minimizing the loss, but enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. I can't stress that enough. Have fun with this. This is a great thing. Folks, what you're doing, most people dream of. And you know what? You're doing it. And you can say, yeah, but I'm not quite successful yet. But you're doing something right now, right now, that most people aren't doing. You are getting better. You are trying to get better. And you can say, how? Because you're here. While everybody else complains, you're getting better. And that's part of this conference is making people better. So now let's talk stocks, all right? And this is very important. We're gonna get down to this nuts and bolts. Why do stocks go up in price? There's more buyers than sellers. And you say, well, that's, that's common sense. You know, that's great. Well, there's a couple of things to think about. There's two schools of thought when it comes to investing. There's fundamental analysis and there's technical analysis. I'm both. I'm a fundamentalist and I'm a technician. So let's talk fundamentals. And this is really good. I've got articles here, you can't see them, but I've got articles. This article is from uh, 2008. I mean, I've got articles going way back when, but I'd like to read you a paragraph. And feel free by the way, team, I hope you do. Take notes, take notes. This is serious stuff. This will make you better. This will make you money, make you more money faster. And I like this. This is research from Investors Daily, Bill O'Neill and Company. One paragraph. In the study of the 600 most successful stocks from 1952 to 2001, by the way, that's a statistical valid sample size, that, that time frame. From 1952 to 2001, three out of four of the stocks that made huge, er, huge price moves had earnings up more than 70% before their breakout. I'm going to say that again. From 1952 to 2001, three out of four of the stocks that made huge moves. I'm, not, I'm up 10%. I don't give a rip about that. Stocks doubling, tripling, quadrupling in price. Massive moves. Three out of four of them had earnings of 70% or higher before they broke out. There's your edge. Right there. There's your price of admission. You can say, yeah, by gum, I'm going to focus on stocks with good earnings. Okay? This is where it gets good. The one fourth that did not have earnings up 70% or higher, the one fourth, their earnings the next quarter were up on average 90%, 90%. So what's the moral of the story? I focus on this. I focus on stocks and here's the recipe for a great cake. You go hold a gun to me and say, okay, cut to the chase, Pat. What do you look for? This is what I look for. I'm giving you the recipe as far as the fundamentals are concerned in this little realm right here. Stocks, that earnings last quarter were up 40% or higher. Focus on those, 40% or higher. Or that's one of my screens. By the way, 
I was invited in, to be in the beta test group for the original daily products on daily grass products online. I was I was one of the guys. Oh, by the way, yeah. Do I have old chart books? You see the date on that? 1989. Yeah. There you go. I got chart books going all the way back. They're great reference tools. Okay. Focus on stocks that last quarter's earnings were up 40% or higher. That's one of my screens on MarketSmith. In fact, I'm going to give you a gift. Here's a screen for you. Focus on stocks in the top 40 or 50 groups. Focus on stocks over $10 or $12 a share. You might want to write this down. Focus on stocks that trade more than 200,000 shares a day. Focus on stocks with a composite rating of 90 or higher. Focus on stocks in the top 40 groups. Focus on stocks with earnings of 40% or higher last quarter, right? Focus on stocks, I think I said this, within 20% of 52-week highs. And the big one, focus on stocks with a composite rating of 90 or higher. That little screen I just gave you, if you follow it stringently and look for clean and simple base breakouts and buy those and manage them properly, that little screen right there will make you a million bucks. And I'm not kidding. You guess what? Over 10 years? Oh, no. In a good market? One year. One year. Now, you're saying, what if you have a $10,000 account? No, I'm going to say if you have like a hundred dollars to $200,000 account. That screen on. And how can I say that? Because we have VIPs that did. And you could say, with what stock? There were two of them, Tesla and Neo. And I'm going to show you the charts too, okay? So we'll make it worth your while. Focus on stocks that have great earnings or flip the coin. Focus on stocks that last quarter's sales for two quarters, we'll say, were up on average 40% or higher. I'm very stringent with this. You can say, why? I had to be. I had to be. You got four kids in private Christian schools at the same time. Tuition? Do the math. Two kids in private Christian schools and two kids in college at the same time? Holy cow. The money's flying out the window. You got to make money. So why not stick with the best of the best? So again, focus on stocks with superior earnings or sales growth. All right. Now, I've got another article here that I'd like to share with you. This is from May 4th, 2011. Look at that. See this? Isn't that great? Richard's going, man, this guy's crazy with this stuff. <laughs> this is from May 4th, 2011. Breakouts work best when you follow rules. Okay? Breakouts work best when you follow rules. Check this out. From August 2007, by the way, I'm not going to read you a lot of stuff today, okay? Don't worry about that. I, you know, we do that. But this is worth, I hope you're taking notes on this. I really do. Man, this changed your life. <clears throat> From August 2007 through October 2007, the market was in a confirmed uptrend. IBD identified breakouts, 39 breakouts. Each offered a valid buy point out of a buy range and had big volume on the breakout. Satisfied, clean and simple base, broke out of a base, and it did it on good volume, right? Here we go. <clears throat> the composite rating was 88 or better in each of the stocks. So now we've got that constraint in there too. 88 or better. You can make it 90, the best of the best. The top performing tier. And this is what you want. This is what we want at Mission Winners. This is what I teach every day over and over to drive home the point. And I love this. And what I'm giving you is a recipe for a good cake. And I love cake. Here we go. Reasons cake's good for it. It's got wheat in it. Okay. It's roughage. Here we go. The top tier, 10 stocks did about four to 10 times better than the NASDAQ's 11 and a half percent gain. Four, you know, how much was the market? Well, it was up about 11% the last couple of months. Oh, yeah. How'd you do? Ah, we were up 40, 40 to 100%. What do you want? The best. Not being boastful. Stick with the best of the best and turn off the noise. I love this. Here we go. 10 stocks did roughly four to 10 times better than, than the NASDAQ's 11.5% gain. This is the sweet potato pie part. All of the, these stocks, had a composite rating 
of at least 96. All of them. I'm going to say that again. All of them had a composite rating of at least 96. They did four to 10 times better than what the NASDAQ did. Isn't that what you want? So you can say, well, what's the takeaway with that statement, Pat? Focus on stocks with high composite ratings. All right. By the way, please know this. I'm not trying to get you to subscribe to Investors Daily or any market. No, no, no. They're great sources. I'm, that's not my point. But please don't think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to impart the skill sets and knowledge so that you can apply them. You own them. You know them. And you can use them. You can use them. In fact, I'll be very blunt. You can say, Pat, well, we'll get to it as far as screens are concerned, okay? Eight stocks dwell within the top 30 groups. The other two were in groups 41 and 53, all right? The average gain on these stocks, are you ready? The average gain on these stocks, 75%? 10 stocks did roughly, right? Four to 10 times better than the NASDAQ's 11.5% gain. Four to 10 times, I mean, folks, isn't that what you want? And again, say I might miss something, stack the deck in your favor. Don't think you've got to look at every stock in the world. You don't. The best of the best really works. The second tier, nine stocks did roughly two to three, three, three times better than the NASDAQ's gain. Okay. Two to three times better. That's not too bad, is it? Okay. Seven had a composite rating of 97. 97. How's that sound? Seven were in the top 30 industry groups. Here we go. So let's build a cake here. What do you say? Let's make a cake. Focus on stocks. I'm going to give you the recipe here. And I don't even need to look at notes on this stuff. It's just, it's up here. Of course, I taught it every month for years. In fact, I still do come to think of, I think I'm doing that now, aren't I? <laughs> here we go. Focus on stocks over 10 or $12 a share. Focus on stocks that trade more than 200,000 shares a day. Focus on stocks within 20% of 52 week highs. Focus on stocks in the top 40 industry groups. Focus on stocks. I think I said it, but I'm saying it again with an accumulation distribution of A or B. Focus on stocks with a composite rating of 90 or higher. Focus on stocks within 20% of 52 week highs. Focus on stocks over the 50 day moving average line. If you take those constraints and use them and stick with them, you will make money. You will. And always, always, no matter what, limit risk, control risk. Price is good above the line and it's bad below. If you could, here, I'll show you something here real quick. We're going to punch up a chart. How about that, Richard? Would that be exciting? Sounds great. Here we go. We'll just do this one. This was a good winner for us. Northrop, <clears throat> I always talk about clean and simple bases. We're going to show you a bunch. You can say, well, that, that's kind of choppy right here. How about this? Clean and simple base right here. Just going across the tops. It's nothing fancy, okay? And what do you want to see? And I say this a lot. I've said this for years. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Go where they're voting, right? Isn't that what you want? And how's that confirmed? Good price action combined with volume. They're buying the stock. Look at the bar right here. You want to see something? You see this right here? Good volume on that bar, right? Good. I mean, heavy, much heavier than average daily volume. I'm going to do something for you. We're going to look at some charts here, by the way, folks. Okay. It's going sideways. Lifts off on good volume. Look, this is average daily volume, folks. Dramatically higher than average daily volume. And it pauses just a little bit above these highs. We say, okay, so we started. Boom. <laughs> you think we're the only people in the world that saw this? Then everybody says, yeah, this is pretty dang good. Look at the volume on that bar. It exploded. And that, running up, that's good money, folks. That's, not, you're not going to sell at the top. But, you know, you're 70, 80 points pretty quick. Um, I don't think that's too bad in about six days. Please note this, by the way. They all don't do that. Okay, I'm not, I'm not conveying that message one bit, okay? But this was a leading stock in a leading group with great earnings 
and our great sales and a high composite rating. That's the key, high composite rating and volume talks. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted, they voted. So you've got fundamental analysis and you've got technical analysis. We combine both together. So let's do this because we're gonna get to questions too. Is that true, Richard? Okay, good. Yep. Um, let's synthesize everything together. First, ask yourself why you're doing this. All right, and don't think about the money. The money will cloud judgment. It really does, okay? Focus on stocks, <clears throat> and this is really important. Leading stocks in the top 40 groups, leading stocks and leading groups, all right? Focus on stocks that are within 20% of 52-week highs. They're over 10 or $12 a share. They trade more than 200,000 shares a day, an accumulation distribution of A or B, composite rating over 90, and does you really lean on this? And last quarter's earnings up 40% or higher, or last quarter sales at 40% or higher. There's two screens for you right there. It's really all you need. In fact, you could say, if you could only have a couple of screens, what would they be? That was it. That was it. I don't need anything else. That's it. The super stocks come up with those screens. They really do. And I need to pause this and say this, please. I'm not trying to get you to, to sign up with Market Smith. I don't work for them, okay? I don't get any dis, I don't have anything to do with that, okay? I'm just a guy just like you, who's our gal, whatever, who's trying to figure this out and trying to get better. But those constraints will really help you. Now you can say, Pat, let's systematize this a bit. Uh, is there a way that I could find leading sectors faster? And I'm gonna give you a great, great tactic. We're talking tactics now, okay? Let's nuts and bolts this a bit. You can say, how do I find some leading sectors real time? Here's what you can do. I have, a list down here, various tabs. See this tab called ETF? Does that show up, Richard, or just the chart? Yeah, it shows up. Very good. You see this tab right here called ETF? Oh, by the way, here's the max list, okay? Here's ETF, here they are. You can say, well, gosh, how can I find out the groups? Here's a bunch of ticker symbols for you folks. And what you can do is you can sort it during the day. It won't do it today because the market's closed. Thank God. You can sort it by quote, so, <laughs> there's a smile. You can sort it by quote, sort a percent. And you can quickly scroll down this list and see where there's strength or where there's weakness. You know, like you can say, oh, biotech, here's biotech. You know, we'll just do a little study here. Look at the clean and simple tops right here. Look at the volume pickup and it took off. There's biotech, cloud computing. In one second, what does this tell you? Leave it alone. By the way, this is a great lesson for you, okay? This is, this is not like hocus pocus. This is the real deal. Are you gonna look? Take a look at this chart. I think I'm gonna look for some cloud computing stocks. Why? There's nothing there. It's junk. Leave it alone. Here's the beautiful part about that. It's good to know what to concentrate on, but it's also good to know what to avoid. That constantly narrows our universe down on what to look for. The moral of this whole story right here, team, focus on strength. Focus on strength and you will do not much better, okay? Electric vehicles, really not much happening there. Not much happening with this. Academy funds, this is, this is the IBD 50, all right? But what does it tell you? There's not a lot of power in the IBD 50 stocks. That's not criticizing investors daily. It's just saying that the leading stocks aren't doing a lot. And it's showing. Continue onward. What does this say? This is gold miners. I'll stop in just a second. This is gold miners. In one second, it tells you, I ain't looking at any gold mining stocks. <laughs> you know what's really great? We've got a limited amount of money and a limited amount of time. Why don't we use them wisely? Okay. There's things to concentrate on and there's things to just put aside. I'm not going to look at this. No, I don't look at these. Gold. I'm not looking at this. Gold was really good earlier in the year but right now it's nothing. There's another biotech ETF. Connect the dots, you ready? I showed you one before. You go, oh, that's not too bad. And then here's another one. It's been strong. What does that tell you? Maybe look at some biotech stocks. You see how you systematize things? Online retail is nothing. By the way, when I'm showing you, I share this with the, the VIPs, admission winners. Every day I screen these and scan them and talk about them. Oil and gas exploit. You see how strong this was? Look at this back here. See this move? 
And you see that run? You think we were in oil and gas? When the market was crummy, we were heavy in oil and gas and it worked. And then we know when to get out. The point of this is, point, is showing you, illustrating to you what to look for and what to stay away from. Home construction was really strong. Stay away from home construction. There's nothing to do with it, okay? Small caps really lagging. Airline stocks, what does this tell you? I ain't buying any airline stocks. You can say, that's power for you. What are we doing? We're narrowing our universe down on what to focus on. Regional banking, dead. I'll stop here. Mid cap, nothing. Oil services, here's another energy one. This was really good and now it's dead. There's nothing to do with it. It tells you automatically, I'm not going to look at any energy stocks. Here's a fact for you. The vast majority of a stock prices movement is related to the industry and the sector that it's in. If it's in a good sector, it increases the potential you're going to make money. Right here saying, I ain't looking at any oil and gas stocks. Isn't that great to know? That eliminates all that. It narrows it down to just the best of the best. That's power for us. That's what we do. There's oil, you know, I'll stop right there, okay? Nothing. And on down the line. And there's QLD. Oh, what is this? This is a higher low setup. Guess what? We're going to talk about that too. How about that? Anyway, systematize. That will really help you. So the M and mission winners, right? The markets. So what do we look for? Now we're going to get down to the specifics. We've got the big picture fundamental. Okay. And then we look at the sectors, leading groups, leading stocks. And now we talk fundamentals, right? Great earnings and our great sales and a high composite rating. And they're near 52 week highs. I read this years ago. You want to buy a stock that's going to be hitting 52 week highs? Look for stocks near 52 week highs. Duh, buy strength, buy strength and avoid weakness. And again, you can say, you're wired really tight about all that. You know, there's a reason why, and you know my story. I had to be, I had to be, I had, there were six miles to feed, okay? Those kids were hungry. My oldest son's six foot eight. I had to be good with this stuff, okay? He's a moose and he ain't fat either. Anyway, they're all big. So that's what we've got going on there, all right? So we've narrowed it down, we focused. We've got the big picture as far as fundamentals. And we even took it a step back beyond that. Why are we doing this? What is your reason? What is your rationale for investing? Concentrate on that. Now you've got a goal. Now we sit there and say, Pat, I know what to look for fundamentally. I'm going to look for stocks with great earnings and or, I didn't say both, and or great sales with a high composite rating. And they're near 52 week highs, within 20% of 52 week highs. And they have a base pattern that everybody in the world can see. If you focus on those, you will make money. It will help you. And now I need to flip that coin and talk about the negative. Do they work every time? No, nothing works every time. You say, well, Bill O'Neill does. No, he doesn't. If it did, he wouldn't have a situation saying limiting losses at seven to eight percent. They don't. So a clean and simple base, and this is why I'm so hung up on this. A clean and simple base will give you a clean and simple exit for a much smaller loss. You will be able to control risk much better. You see this right here, BPT? Remember we looked at the energy ETFs doing so well? You see this clean and simple base? This is vanilla. There's nothing fancy. See the volume pick up through the tops? That bar right there. Look at that. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbook. Hey, they voted. They were buying and it made a nice move. And we bought that. We bought that. And it was a good run. Then we sold some into strength as it started to drop and locked in the profits. Sold some on the way up, sold some on the way down. But what's the key point here? It's a clean and simple base. If you focus on those, it works. Now I need to stop here and say this, this is important. Why? Why do clean and simple bases work so well? Like a cup and a handle or a simple flat base. Team, I, we've had hundreds of stocks do this over the years. Why do they do this? Why is it so good? Why do they work? Isn't that what you wanna know? Hey Pat, I wanna make money, that's what I'm here by Joe, why? Think about it. Everybody sees this. This is not fancy. 
every a fourth grader could see this and say, yeah, it's going sideways. Uh, gosh, I guess, you know, I can see that. I guess if it takes out those tops, cross that line, that flat line with volume, that'd be pretty good. Oh, there you go. I guess I'll buy some. There you go. Not a huge move, but it's 20% on your money in a couple of weeks. That's not bad. That's one of them. Clean and simple bases. Flip the coin though. This is the part I really love. Price is good above the line and it's bad below. So do we have to give it seven or 8% losses? No. Off the record, Bill O'Neill said he wanted to keep losses much less than seven or 8%. Okay. This is the beautiful part about what we do and no day trading here. I don't scalp and I don't look at five minute chart. I'm gonna look at a five minute chart this year. If I had, I'd probably I'd be dead. It's too much. See these same clean and simple tops? Price is good. It starts to go. If it falls well down below this line, drops below this line, you can sell it. One thing we have learned at Mission Winners, and this is from looking at a million charts through the years, literally, you know what to look for. And I'm sharing it with you. This is a gold mine right here, folks. And I'm going to show you some other examples. It's good above the line and it's bad below. Over and over, it works. It works. Richard, can I drag some charts in here real quick? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, here we go. Let's bring some in. By the way, what I'm showing you here are past stocks that we own. These are all past keyless stocks, every one of them. If there's any other I want to look at currently right here. I think that's pretty good right there. And Pat, it would be great if you could talk about where you place your stop loss as well. Um, you know, after, after you make a specific buy point, where do you actually place that stop loss? And, and when would you sell some if it reverses from that clean, simple base? Great pattern? question. Let's answer. Richard, thank you. We'll answer that right now. Price is good above the line and it's bad below. If I buy this pushing through this line, by the way, did it have good volume? Yeah, it did. Yes, it did. And we bought it in a crummy market. Folks, in a crummy market, right? This, this is working. It's good above the line and bad below. Addressing Richard's question, which is a great question. And you know what's awesome? This is why I love Mission Winners and you know working with Richard on things. It's the real world. What do we do? How do I manage this? What am I supposed to do? Good above the line, bad below. It lifts off. If this starts falling below the line by 30 or 40 cents, okay, I'm going to sell a third or a half my shares. It's that simple. And that's not day trading. It's looking at millions of charts through the years, knowing the biggest problem you have is the sucker goes and goes and you can't get enough shares because everybody sees it. Goes, lifts, takes off. Next day you're tested, okay? Came right down to the line, but you're still okay. Stays above the line. Here's the bottom line, folks. Price is, I'll say it again. Price is good above the line and it's bad below. By default, and this is what we do, it helps us keep losses extremely small. If it starts to drop below this line, we'll sell a third or half our shares. For, for an 1% loss, 2%, if it continues falling, we'll sell the rest for a very small loss. One of the things I'm big on, I never want a big loss ever, ever. By managing them like this, it really helps. But there is a stipulation here. Remember, clean and simple bases that everybody can see helps us keep losses much smaller. That's what we want. And I'll say it again. You experienced this and you've done the fundamental homework. You know what to look for? The best ones, they just go. They just take off. It's a thing of beauty. So anyway, when, good question. Good question. I thank you for that. It's uh, right here. Clean and simple. Own it. Look at the clean and simple base, folks. Here, I'll do this. By the way, this is a great, uh, and again, this is the psychology side of me. Don't, and you can say, yeah, Pat, you are crazy. That's what you mean. Okay, I'll go with you. This is, uh, this is what's really great. Go back and study past winners and do this. Slide it over and train your eyes Say, oh, that's a clean top. You know, those are clean base right there. It's above the 200 day. It's above the moving averages. By the way, focus on studs, stocks within 20% of 52-week highs, as I stated. Tremendous 
increase your probability of working. By the way, these were the numbers we were looking at when we bought this. When we bought this just a couple of weeks, a week ago, earnings per share rank 93, composite rating 97. Focus on stocks with a composite rating of 90 or higher. Relative strength 93. Relative strength was leading the stock of the new high ground. Oh, yes. Last quarter's earnings were at 540%. Boom. There you go. And sweet potato pie in a crummy market. There you go. That's not a bad start, is it? We've sold some into strength to guarantee profits. We're in good shape. Over and over, it will really, really help you. So let's, let's drag some in here, okay? Just to show you, because I think this is important. <clears throat> Tell me if that shows up, Richard. Yeah, it looks perfect. Great. And Richard, by the way, again, thank you for inviting me. I'm honored that you asked me. And um, it's a pleasure working with you on these things. So, and I try to help any way you know me. All right. So thank you, sir. The whole Trader Lion team. See the clean and simple base? By the way, this is from 2017, folks. This broke out way back here. Look at this. Actually, it was 2016. But look at the move. See the clean and simple base? You see the volume? This was a keyless stock. Breaks out, heavy volume. And yeah, you know, what are we talking? 20 to the mid 40s? Look at the trend. I'm going to show you several of these. All these were keyless stocks. The key point is this. Look at the base. That's really what I want you to concentrate on. Look at this. And if you really want to go, do good and better, be better than the average person, put the chart on your system and look at it. Train your eyes and mind on your stock charting platform. There's an edge that'll really help you. And then do this, the real world. Slide the chart back to before it broke out and advance it one day and look at it. Advance it another day and then advance it that third day and look at when it pushes through the pivot and ask yourself, yeah, would I buy that? Does it have good price action? Does it have good volume action? Yes, it does. You've trained your eyes and mind on what to look for. Commit to that. It, this works. This work, it had to work for me. And you know what? I know this, it has to work for you too. How about this for a beautiful color? Penduo Duo, PDD. Look at this break right here. Clean and simple, runs up, pulls back, tests the pivot, and then makes the march. But note the clean and simple base. I'm just gonna drag some more in here. THC, Tenant Healthcare. Folks, this is from, look, this is from 2018. Clean and simple flat base that everybody in the world saw. Keyless stock. There you go. That's good money. Over and over. If you do this, life will be better. In mode. Clean and simple base. Buy. See the volume coming in here and here, pushing through the tops. And it goes. I mean, you're talking 28 to 58. Now, you're not going to sell at the top, but that's money. I'm going to show you a couple of real world times right here. Here's Netflix. Clean and simple flat base, right there. Look at the volume. Everybody in the world saw it. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Hey, they voted. I mean, this folks, this is a good run. From what, what do you say, 530 up to almost 700? And please note this, by the way, I please do not think this is Pat Walker bragging. That's obnoxious. Nobody wants that. I'm just, these are things I wish somebody had shown me and I'm speaking from my heart. They took me aside and said, hey, Pat, um, listen, man, I know it's, this is really eating you up alive with the family. Focus on this, it'll help you. And that's what I'm trying to do. Going sideways, look at the volume breakout right there. Roku, sales were up 50, 51% when we bought it. Great earnings and our great sales and a great run. Go sideways. Loses the shelf right here on volume. Last sale, the rest was sold. We'll do a few more of these. Okay, bear with me. GSX. This goes back even further. It was a clean and simple flat base. Pushing through the tops right here. Look at the volume, folks. 
This was group number four when we bought it. Earnings were up 450%. Sales were up 350%. Look at that. Composite rate was 99 when we bought it. Not up here, back here. These were the numbers we were looking at. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted. And there it goes over and over. I'll do a couple more here. I don't want to inundate too much. Now we're going to switch gears. This is the higher low setup. This is beyond me. I remember when I did this and I had people say, this is just a fad. There's nothing good with this goofy fake me. Had great sales. Sales were up 215%. We really bought it and it was in a leading room. Higher low setup, folks. This low was higher than this low. Runs up, pulls back, triggers. Right here it had volume and we bought it right in here. Uh, we'll, we'll say we bought it for 80 some odd bucks a share, okay? Uh, we didn't sell at the top, liars sell at the top. But 80 to 240, that's a triple the last time I checked. Just, and our last sale was right there. Simple, over and over. And you can see why. Then duo, duo, clean and simple. I'll do a couple more. Data dog. There you go. CyberArk. Clean and simple flat base. When we bought this, folks, this was on the key list. This is back in 2018. When we bought this, earnings were up 92%. Right here. You're not, go back and look, pull it up. You'll see. Yeah. You know, oh, look at the volume on that bar. Look at the volume. They voted. And that's a nice run. Over and over it works. All right. Let's see. No, we'll stop with that because I want to show you something else. All right. Okay. So let's look at a couple of things right now. Can we do that, Richard? Is that cool with you guys? Sounds great. Okay. I want to share another setup with you. All right. I've told you about the clean and simple flat base. And yeah, you, you know it works. All right. It doesn't work every time, but more times than not, it works. And when it works, it works really well. I want to show you something. This is Neo. And you go, there ain't nothing here. I agree. What's the phrase I use over and over again? Clean and simple flat base. You can say, this is nothing. I agree. Right here. Clean and simple flat base. Look at the volume pickup on that bar. Buy. Clean and simple flat base. Gaps up. Unbelievable volume. Buy more. Clean and simple flat base. Lifts through these tops. Volume pickup right there. Buy more. Buy, buy, buy. Average price, okay, in the lower 20s. And I need to share this with you folks. And again, this is the me being the IBD Daily Graphs Market Smith guy for years. I encourage you, rules of proper pyramiding. I'm going to give you something very, very important. This is CanSum level three and CanSum level four. Okay, I've been there. Got the manuals here on my desk on the other side. You want to get to 100 shares. You, you might want to write this down. In fact, I hope you wrote everything down. Why? I'll be very honest, you're gonna be tested on it. Monday, you'll be tested and Tuesday and Wednesday. How about that? When you're buying and you want to get to 100 shares, rules of proper pyramiding, you buy at the pivot, your first purchase is 50 shares. And I have to give a stipulation, this is really important. And again, this is CanSim level three and four. You're looking for good stocks in good groups in a good market, breaking out a clean and simple basis with volume. You gotta satisfy those constraints. Your goal is to get to 100 shares. Your first purchase would be 50 shares. The price goes up a couple of percent. Your next purchase would be 30 shares. 50 shares, then 30 shares. Price continues going up. Your third purchase would be 20 shares. 50. 30, 20 for a total of 100 shares. That's CanSum level three and four. Yeah, I know I've got the stuff here too. For buying properly, adding onto a position. Now, what kind of a stock do you wanna do this with? You want to do this with a stock that has these traits. It's in the top 40 groups. It has great earnings and are great sales. A chart pattern a sixth grader could understand it's breaking out on heavy volume, has a high composite rating. And again, it's a leading stock and a leading group. Focus on those. And those rules of proper pyramiding really help. I'm going to do it again. 
because this is important. Your goal is to get to 100 shares. Your first purchase, you never buy, never buy your full position at one time. Okay. I really mean that. Your first purchase would be 50 shares. It goes up in price a couple of percent. Your next purchase would be 30 shares, 50 and 30. Continues going up another percent or two. Your third purchase would be 20 shares. That is rules of proper pyramiding, and it works. It's very serious. And I do stress, if it doesn't go up in price, don't buy more. Think about this. What's the beauty of that? This is what's awesome. You don't have full exposure. It's not like, oh my God, what happened to me? No, you only started with a half a position. Never start with a full position. Also, monitor control risk. When the market's sloppy like this, this is today, okay? There's the spiders, the S&P. When the market's like this, you're not gonna see this in any chart book. You're not gonna hear Bill O'Neill say, now you see this pattern right here, this is where you wanna go fully invested. You're not gonna see that, no. There's a ton of overhead, it's choppy. Control risk by going smaller. There's a day to really push it and get fully margined, which I will tell you this, in a good market, I can get fully margined in a day, okay? Day, just plowing, or two, you know, depending on the operating user there. But when the market's sloppy, go less, control risk. And you can respond back to me right now. Yeah, but I won't make as much money, Pat. Come on, don't feed me that. And my response is, in a sloppier market, which this is, you won't lose as much money either. We've got to control money. We've got to manage it. There's two types of capital in the market. There's financial capital and there's emotional or psychological capital. We must protect both of them. And how can we? By good investing rules and tactics combined with discipline. I, I really mean that. Everything I'm telling you, team, I'm speaking from my heart. That's a fact, okay? So can we talk here in a rich about a higher low setup? Is that possible? Do I have enough time or how am I for time? Yep, we're just at an hour. You've got plenty of time to, to cover that. And I've, I definitely got a ton of great questions as well, but yeah, go for it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for, and again, gentlemen, thanks for putting this together. You, this, this is what's great. You're helping people. And that, that's, that's a huge, that's noble. So well done. So I'm gonna show you something here, folks. One of our favorite setups is the higher low setup. My favorite setup is a clean and simple flat base. I love them. I live for them. I'll take them over anything else. But are there a couple other patterns that you can use? Yes, this is the higher low setup. And I'll, I'll do it first here on QLD. The NASDAQ 100, this low is higher than this low. Notice this, you have lower lows all the way down here. This, this low is lower than this low. This low is lower than this low. This low is lower than this low. And then it rallies up and then it falls and hits another low. And then it rallies up and it falls Oh, this low is higher than this low. This is a more advanced investing tactic, but it does work. It shows, using the big market first, this is showing that there is a reversal, that for the first time, it's illustrating some strength in the markets and stocks. This low is higher than this low. We watched it. We picked it up right here, taking out the previous bar's highs, and it's working. It's not a huge gain, but it's a start. This low is higher than this low. I'll show you another one here. This low is higher than this low. Notice all the way down, you've got lower lows, okay? Lower low, lower low. I mean, all oh, this low is lower than this low. This low is lower than this low. It goes up, it drops. Oh my God, this is the end of the world. <clears throat> There's a valuable lesson here, and I got to drink some water. Hang on. From a psychological perspective, what is this showing? This low is higher than this low. The selling pressure is dropping off. This low is higher than this low. This is the real world, by the way. This is a setup we use a lot and I love it. And it works. Lift it and it's marching. So you buy it and this is the best part. Controlled risk. If it starts to fall, where would you sell? If it takes out the lows of this bar for a very small loss, there you go. Do you buy a lot of shares on this setup? 
No, but it works. This is a point I want to bring up. A lot of people, and I've seen it again, one of my degrees is in psychology. This stuff going up here can really muddy up. Oh man, the market's bad. You know, there ain't nothing. I mean, you look at this. Here's the spiders again. There's nothing going on. This is ridiculous. I quit. I'm not going to look at any charts. This is stupid. Always look. It doesn't mean you have to be buying, but you're always prepared just in case. Those that said, there's nothing happening here. I'm not going to do anything. They missed this. And this is a good start. It's not a huge start, but it's a start. <clears throat> they missed this. And it's a start. These were all on the list. They missed this. This low is higher than this low. And look at that move. Dang near 200 points right here from taking out the previous bars high, right there. There you go, a higher low setup. I'll show you another one, Tesla. This low is higher than this low, right? Good volume on that bar. Look at the volume pickup, takes it off and it marches. By the way, do I like the higher low setup? You tell me, uh, back here, this low was higher than this low. And look at that run. They all don't do this, but this is the real world. You want to be successful. You need to have discipline. You have to have a couple of entry tactics that are viable, that work, okay, and own them. And I'm sharing this with you. This, this was huge. You could say, you got any others that you could show us just to drive home the point? Watch this. You could say, well, that's a lower low, Pat. You wouldn't do that. You're correct. We didn't do it. But look at this low here. This low is higher than this low. And right here, this was on the key list. And look at the volume pickup on this bar. I'll slide this over so that we avoid any psychological bias. Say, oh, okay, I see that, that's a higher low. <clears throat> I guess if it starts to go up, that'd be good, you know? Oh, gee whiz, look at that. It did it and it did it on volume. Gosh, I'll be darned. Look at that, I guess some people saw that higher low setup right here, okay? They all don't work this good. But that is a nice run. That is a really nice run. Do we like the higher low setup? Oh, it's dropping. It's below the 50 day. This is awful. It's the end of the world. Yeah, okay, so it's going up. I don't know. You know, I lift it up. It's no, it's going to stop at the 50. Uh, I see. I told you it's fallen. Yeah, look at it. it's fallen on increasing volume. Okay, well, that's just an inside bar. Okay, well, I, yeah, this yeah, that's a higher low. I can see it, but I don't know. We'll have to watch and see what happens. Yeah, so it closed up a little bit on a slight pickup in volume. I don't know, but yeah, it's a higher low, but I'm not sure. Oh, gosh, I guess other people saw what we see. Team, this is the real world. We owned this. This was on the key list. I was in Memphis when this at a wedding, okay? All the way in Memphis. I lift it off right here. Entries right in here. Now, I'm not going to lie and say we sold it up here at the top, but right there, folks, that's 100 points on a 200 and some odd dollar investment. Thing near 50%. It's a higher low setup. So let's cut to the chase on all this. We know why we're doing this, right? From a psychological perspective. We also know why we're doing it from a fundamental perspective. We have going to master a couple of chart patterns. Now the higher low pattern is more advanced, okay? You can't stress that enough. It's riskier. But what pattern is the best? A clean and simple flat base breakout works great. Stick with that. Look for volume through that top. Buy there. Volume Price action combined with volume action is conf confirming variable. And again, here's advanced micro devices. You go, this thing looks off. By the way, that was a lower low. We didn't do that, did we? Look at the clean and simple flat base right here with a volume pickup. And then the clean and simple flat base right here, pushing through here with another volume pickup. Boom. Boom, and that is a nice run, walking up the ADMA. So I need to tell you this, this is the 200 day simple. This is the 50 day simple. This is the 21 day exponential. And this is the eight period exponential. And one of the VIPs, who's my brother from another mother, and I know he's smiling right now out in California. There's about two years of hard work on that eight period exponential moving average that we did at this turn of the century. But there it is. 
over and over, clean and simple bass right here, and it works. Over and over, you will see the patterns recur. I don't know if there was another one on this one or not. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at this, folks. This is, I love this stuff. This is as good as ice cream. See this flat base going sideways? Yeah, I saw that smile, Richard. I saw that, buddy. You like that ice cream. There you go. Hey, folks, ice cream is good for you. It's got calcium. It's good for the bones. There you go. Beer, hops, malt, and barley. Three grains. It's just like raisin bran. Okay, here we go. Should, I hope the kids aren't around. Okay, see the nice base right here? Look at the volume pickup. Now, this is another very important tactic that we teach. Don't look at all your charts after the fact. Look at them before the fact to train your eyes and mind on what to see. And you can say, okay, I see some tops here. Boy, there was good volume on that bar, Pat. Rallied up, but it did it and dropped, but it did on less volume than it went up on. There was good volume on that up bar too there, Pat. Hmm. And it's just a clean, flat base that everybody can see. It was in a good group and it had great earnings or sales. I guess if it takes out this line, that would be good. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted right here. Look at that. By the way, folks, this is from 2020. Okay, this is from dang near a year, two years ago. The patterns repeat over and over because they're a reflection of human emotions and human emotions don't change. They're the same as they've been forever. And people bought it. Tested, and then you get the march. Sells into strength. Sells into strength help. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Selling some into strength. I don't want to get too deep with this but there's something you need to know. There was a rule called the uptick rule that was put in place with the Securities and Exchange Act of 1933 and 34. There were bear raids by people like Jesse Livermore where you could sell short a stock and just drive it down in price. And they literally caused stocks, they were called bear raids. They called stocks to plummet, all right? Well, the security, and it really precipitated and accelerated during the crash of 1929, okay? No, I wasn't there for it. Okay, so let's, let's stop there. But it really accelerated the decline in the crash of 1929. Yeah, I'm a student of the markets. All right, and it spun. Well, the SEC got together and said, we need to stop this because these stocks can't, can't keep dropping like that. So they put in the SEC Act in 1934. And what did that say? In order to sell short a stock, you have to have an uptick. Somebody, you want to sell short advanced micro devices at 79.35. There needs to be a sell. There needs to be, excuse me, there needs to be a buy. Somebody has to buy it and it has to go up in price before your sell short order is triggered. It's called an uptick. It has to be bought. They eliminated the uptick rule in 2008 again. And what does that mean? And I'm not saying this to scare you, but just things to be aware of. Knowledge is power. I learned that from a good buddy of mine, Paul, who's probably listening. Paul down in Texas. Anyway, they eliminated the uptick rule. And what does that mean? You can sell short, a, a sell short a stock and you don't need an uptick. So you can drive it down in price. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to scare you. It's just something to be aware of. That's all. So I want to synthesize everything though. One last time. You know why you're doing this from a psychological perspective and a personal perspective? Okay, you've got your goals and priorities set right. You know what to look for fundamentally. Stocks in leading groups with great earnings and are great sales, a high composite rating, a good accumulation distribution rating of A or B. It's within 20% of 52 week highs, no low price stocks. It's got a chart pattern that everybody in the world can see, right? Like that. Everybody in the world sees this, folks. It ain't nothing fancy. A fourth grader could draw it with a crayon, okay? How fourth graders don't use crayons anymore, do they? I don't know. Anyway, and if they don't let them use it on your monitor for dang sure, okay? You buy it, pushing through the moving averages, or in this instance, it's through clean and simple tops. You're looking for volume confirmation on the daily and the hourly or 30 minute that your triggers to buy. No volume, no buy. Continues. You can add to it. You sell some into strength that I discussed, 
okay? And how do you sell into strength? I'm gonna hammer this hard. You buy it, you own 100 shares. The stock goes up and starts to fade. Don't look at the five minute and 10 minute charts, okay? The stock's running up and it starts to fade and you get a bar like this, okay? It gaps up, it runs up and it starts to reverse and it's closing near the lows. Sell some, sell 20%. That's all, no more. Let it work. Now, here's what you can do though. You see where it drops here and then it starts to lift again, bouncing off the ADMA. If you really want to get fancy and we do this, you could buy some shares back, all right? But if it keeps dropping, you sell more and own this concept, own this, never. I'm being really stringent here, folks. Never let a good profit turn into a loss. If you bought this right here and it ran all the way up to here, it is a sin to take this down to where you're losing money. Never let a good profit turn into a loss. And another key point, never average down. You were wrong. Do not make yourself more wrong. It won't work. So we've talked about things from a psychological perspective. We've talked about stocks from a fundamental perspective on what to look for. Remember, a clean and simple entry and a good trend pays. Write it for all it's worth. Another phrase that's heard a lot is this phrase. Say it again, you'll never go broke taking a profit. If your losses are bigger than your profits, you'll go broke. That is why it is compulsory. I really mean this. By the way, I have to tell you this. Everything I'm saying, I wish somebody would have said to me when I was getting started. I wish somebody would have said, hey, come on, Pat, what are you doing, man? You're, you're undermining your tactics. You're hurting your family. Why are you selling all of it? Wouldn't you be ticked to buy this and it goes up and you sell it and then it pulls back and it keeps on running and you can't find a way to get back in. And I know this for a fact, darn near every person listening to me goes, yeah, God, I know how that is. Yeah, I hate that. It's awful. It's awful. So what do you do? You sell some into strength. You sell 20%. You're guaranteed a profit. If the rest of your shares comes back to your cost, you could sell the rest for break even and you still made money, right? That's good. Less stress leads to clear decision-making. And then you have the rules and tactics of letting it work and walk up the 21-day moving average or the 50-day moving average or the AEMA and let it work. Let it work. And after you have a really good profit, this is another thing that I'll do. And I've talked to the people at Mission Winners too. Take it off your front page. Don't even look at it. Have price alerts set, okay? Not stops, just alerts. Have it set. Maybe look at it once or twice a day. Other than that, just let it go. Really, you're not getting sloppy. You're letting the stock work for you. More money is made by letting the stock work for you than all the decision-making that we do in our lifetime in relation to stocks. Let them work. So I know I covered a lot and I know I went relatively quickly, but I had a lot of material that I wanted to cover. And I will say this team, and I'm speaking from my heart. I take this very seriously, not just for myself, but I will also tell you this. And some of you know me really, really well. I never want to hurt anybody, okay? What I shared with you, I hope helps you, helps you. And yes, I've been involved in some very serious situations with people um, that were contemplating suicide. Not mission winners, folks, nothing like this, nothing related to the stock market. But there's times you got to be there for people and do things to help them. Not related to stocks, it's related to life. So enrich other people's lives. The last point I want to make on this, take care of yourself. Richard's probably going, what is he doing now? <laughs> no, I really, I'm speaking from my heart. Take care of yourself. Work hard at this, but get away from it. Go out and exercise. Go run. Go walk. It's good for your head and it's good for your heart. Take care of yourselves. I really mean that a lot. It's important. Develop good relationships. Have quality. Work with other people. If you do, pray. Prayer. Prayer is a good thing. Do things like this. But I do stress. I had an advanced psychology class. And this is the last thing I'll say. And the teacher was brilliant. Um, it was a very intense class. His specialty was treating rapists. And man, did he get down to some serious conversations. But I'll never forget, he was a doctor, 
and he said, I want you all to do something, and I'll share this with you. Take a look at your hand. Move it. Look at the joints. Notice it. Really study it. And then he paused. And I was in my 20s, so I was very impressionable, but I think it's still a profound thought. He said, I want you all to look at your hand closely. And then he paused and he said, take good care of it because you're going to be buried with it. And he said, what a downer. No, the whole point of this talk is to help people make money, help them speed up the learning curve, help them to become profitable more faster, right? Taking care of yourself. Take care of yourself financially, but take care of yourself psychologically, mentally, and physically. Really important stuff. Because if you're sick, none of this matters. Take good care of yourself. You'll have more energy. You'll have, you'll be, I, you know, I'm grateful, you know, I'm, I got energy, I'm going. Do that, and that'll really help you. I know it's not related to stocks, but indirectly, it is. Because it's related to who you are and what's going on up here and physically. Anyway, I hope that didn't offend anybody. Richard, I hope that was all right to say. Yeah. But it's the total package, folks. It's the total package. And yeah, I'll be honest. I've had scares in my life. I've been operated on for some serious things. Life. So, okay, Richard, let's do some questions, man, because I'm talked out for right now. Yeah, sounds good. And Pat, thank you so much for that presentation. And um, for everybody watching, let me know your questions in the chat right now. And I've got some notes right here as well. Uh, first of all, Pat, I'd love to ask you, uh, you know, before that clean and simple base pattern completes, what do you look for to potentially, you know, put it on that list for the next day? What do you look for in terms of the actual setup? Um, and also, um, you know, what are you looking for on the hourly chart? to see that volume surge to indicate that, okay, volume's coming in, other people are buying it, uh, let me go ahead and enter right through that line. Awesome, great, by the way, team, that's a great question. By the way, I use the word team because that's what I call everybody, mission winners, and you're all part of a team too. We're, hey, you know what, we're a team right here, we're working together. What do I look for? And again, oh, I need to share this with you too. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I will never criticize, I'll never, man, that's a stupid question. I ain't gonna do that. You don't kill the human spirit, this is hard enough. We got to help each other. We got to push each other and pull each other. Got to keep going. Here's what I look for. I'm looking at the daily chart as it's approaching the pivot price. I'll take it to the hourly chart and I will look. This is too far back to go to the hourly. I will look for a volume surge, volume picking up as it's approaching or hitting the pivot. And I will look for a volume surge on the hourly or the 30 minute or maybe even the 10 minute chart if it's near the beginning of the day. Look for that volume surge. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Look for where that volume is coming into it. And you'll see it surging. You'll go, my gum, they're buying this stock right through that pivot. I'm buying it. You can see it. And you can see it before it. You can see volume coming into it as it's approaching the pivot. And you're not day trading. It has to make sense on the day chart, folks, or you don't even look at it. But if you see that volume surge coming in on the hourly, 30 minute or 10, you're good. Now I have to share this with you too. And this is important. I share this with the mission winners folks all the time. You look at it, it's approaching the pivot. And you look at it on the daily, of course, first. And you can look at weekly. But what else do you do? And by the way, it's important to look at weekly charts on these, these setups too. You take it to the hourly and you see volume coming into it. You don't need to look at the 30 minute or 10. It satisfies the requirement. It's good. It's a heavy volume on the hourly. That's a go. No reason to look at 30 minute and 10. If there isn't a lot of volume on the, on the hourly, then you look at the 30 minute or 10 up closer to see, yeah, there's some volume coming into that. And it's very, very, it's a great tactic. It's relevant to what we do. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. We're looking to where they're voting. And if they ain't voting, I'm not voting either. I'm not gonna do it. Why? Because other people might see it, but they're not buying it. And let's be pragmatic. It's going to take more than you or me to move the stock. It's going to take a bunch of people buying it, which is why we love clean and simple. So take the daily, hourly, if it's heavy volume, it's a go. It's a go. There you go. Anyway, yeah. good question. Thank you. Whoever asked, thank you. No problem. And we've got about nine minutes left, so I want to get a few questions in, Pat. Go. Um, yeah, first of all, um, once you've got a position, say you bought this AMD breakout right here and you've maybe sold 20% to strength, how are you using your moving averages to uh, try to follow the rest of the trend and exit as the stock starts breaking down? Great question. I love it. 
This is the A period exponential moving average. This is the 21 day and this is the 50 day. As long as this beast is traveling, trending up the ADMA, I'll stay with it. I'll stay with it. Now, when I see a bar like this, where it's very extended in price, it gaps up, runs up and reverses down on a pickup in volume. That can be a flag right there to say, I'm going to sell a little bit. Okay, I'll sell a little bit into that strength. But what will I do if the next day it drops down below the eight day? Okay, and volume's coming up. I'll sell a little bit more. Sell another 20%. Don't sell all of it. Might keep going, but sell some. Rallies up, goes here. Look at this bar right here, folks. Watch this. This is great. I love this. This is fun. See this bar right here? See, that's a good bar, right? I'll make this bigger for you to help you. Okay. And then it does this. Look at this bar. It gaps up, it runs up, and reverses down on a pickup in volume. Now it found support at the ADMA. But we got to be careful with that. We got to watch this. Boom. The next day it caps up and it loses the eight. <clears throat> you think we're the only people in the world that saw this? Other people saw this and said, I better be careful. The next day, gaps up a hair and loses the eight. Fairly heavy bond. That could be a sell. Sell some more. Don't sell all of it. Let it trend as long as possible. That's a trigger that works. And it's not fancy. It's conceptually simple and correct. Good. Perfect. And Thank there you. was a question about uh, basically what position sizes you use on a typical basis, um, and basically in terms of how many stocks that at once you'll hold in your portfolio. And also, I'd, I'd also ask, uh, do, do the market conditions change kind of your max position size? Great question. Yes, when, <clears throat> when the market conditions change, my position size changes with it. I'm always adapting to what's going on. Good investing is not one size fits all. In a good market, We'll say your goal is to get to 100 shares, all right? This is Kansas level three or four, and the market's good. Your first purchase is 50 shares, price goes up. Your next purchase is 30 shares, price continues going up. Your next purchase is 20 shares. 50, 30, 20 for a, share, for a total of 100 shares. When the market's sloppier, choppier, like this, when the market's acting a little sloppier and choppier, I'll do less shares. I'm always controlling risk. There's a time to really push it, and there's a time not to. And by doing less shares, it helps us control risk. And you can say, yeah, but Pat, if it runs here, you won't make as much money. And I said, it's below all the moving averages. Basically, it's a riskier setup. I'm going to control risk. There's a time that I will really push it. When's the times to really push it? When it's, when it's just trending nice, okay? That's, that's just great stuff. And when it's like, look at this. When it's not, you have to do less shares. And know this, just because the market's for open for business doesn't mean we need to do business. Do less shares or don't do anything at all and wait for your setup. That's one of the biggest problems I have with social media. It's, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I gotta... No, you don't. Focus on what works for you and do those. And when the market's sloppier, it's below a fallen 50 day, do less shares. That will help you. And you can say, again, I won't make as much money. And my response is, and you won't lose as much if it's because of this sloppy action. That helps you. Control risk, manage risk. When it's above the moving averages and trending nicely, you can go bigger. You can go bigger. That will really help. That will keep you in the game forever. So Perfect. good. And how many positions would you say are in your portfolio at any given time? Great question. Can some level three or four? Most number of positions you should really ever have is eight to 10. Okay. And by the way, with those eight to 10, you can go on margin. Okay. In a good market. In a sloppier market, fewer positions. In a bad market, no positions. Or maybe the inverse, QID or SDS, the inverse ETFs. Other than that, you sit tight and you wait. People say, I've got to be doing something. This is one of the biggest myths on Wall Street. And one of the biggest things I see on social media, you always got to be doing something. No, there's times just to sit and wait. It protects financial capital, but it also protects emotional, psychological capital. Here's why, because if you fight with this market, you fight with crud like this and you keep trying to buy and you get, you get chewed up, all of a sudden you go, this is not good. <laughs> I'll keep it clean. <laughs> this is not good. I, I, I'm quitting or I'm messed up. I can't do anything. I got the freeze. Dr. Van Tharp talks about the book in market, about it in Market Wizards, the last chapter. Avoid the freeze. Control risk. Know when to go in. Know when to stop. Know when to go smaller. There's times, that, like right here, you see this? This isn't a time to go big. No way. You're not going to see this in any chart book saying, well, 
You know, you wouldn't hear Bill O'Neill say, I see this setup right here. This is where you go fully margin. You're going to say that. No, and he is a great guy. I'll say it again. Bill O'Neill changed my life. Tell you that right now. What a kind soul. Anyway, time to go big and a time to go smaller. Control that risk. When will it happen? When we turn and start trending more on good volume and you see more quality stocks breaking out of good basis with good volume. That'll help you. That's confirmation. It's like, hey, they're buying this sucker. They're buying. There's hardly any stocks doing that right now. So go smaller and control the risk. That will help you. Let's go ahead. Perfect. <clears throat> And I think we have maybe room for two more questions. So first of all, there's a few people who asked, uh, what's too extended past that buy point um, for you to buy? 2%, 5% past that line. And also, I, I want to ask you, do you care about how much the stock has run up in the past few days before it reaches that horizontal line? Uh, for instance, if it's come pretty far in, in just those few days, do you wait for some type of consolidation pullback before you look to buy through that breakout? Good question. Uh, too extended is I want to buy... First part, it's great. By the way, I compliment all of you. These are great questions. I want to buy near the pivot. I don't want to, I don't want to wait till, oh, I'm going to wait till it's up here. No, I want to, if it's pushing through this line, clean and simple base, and it's doing it on good volume, and you take it down early in the morning, you take it down to the hourly or 30 minute, and you see good volume, hey, I'm buying. That's it. How do I start? Pyramiding, as I said, your goal is to get to 100 shares. You start with 50, it starts to go up. You buy 30, 30 more, it continues going up. You buy 20 more. That'll help you. That'll work. Clean and simple here, but it's got to have volume coming into it on less little time frames. What was the second part of that question, Richard? I want to get it right. Basically, um, in the case that a stock has run pretty hard before it's trying to push through that line, uh, do you take into that into account at all? Or uh, do you buy it anyway if it's, it's already come you know, 10% in the past three days up to that line? Do you wait for some type of pullback before you, you look to enter? Great question. I will wait or I will be very cautious and buy less shares. Let's let's just do this one right here, okay? I mean, I, this isn't a breakout, but we'll use it. Clean and simple top, and it's lifted off here, and it did it on good volume across those tops, right? Um, it's made a huge move to get there. A huge, it ex, it expended a tremendous amount of buying power from people to get up to this point. Normally, what happens? At, I mean, folks, they they had to buy it here all the way through here and here and here and here. It's expending a lot of people's money to extend it. Wait for it to, I won't chase these that are this extended, okay? Wait for it to pull back a little bit and settle down and look for a better entry. I will not buy stocks that had it. I'm gonna be blunt. I don't buy stocks that had to make a huge move to get to the pivot, to the breakout. I don't buy them. It's too risky. The chance of failure and pullback is too high. You'll increase your odds if you wait. Like right here, compare and contrast it to right here. See this base right here? Did it have to move a lot to get to that pivot? No, not a bit. Had to move what, 20 cents? This isn't bad at all. Didn't have to make this big run. That right there, this is much safer. There you go. Perfect. And last question I think that we've got time for, uh, how do you handle gap ups when it's right at that pivot? So it, it basically... It, it's it's gapping up in pre-market right at that pivot. Do you, do you wait for some type of intraday consolidation or will you just manage risk and and, and buy it anyway right, right at that level? Great question. It's gapping up right at the open and it's at the pivot price. I will watch it closely. If volume is really good right at the open, okay? I will watch it on a 10 minute chart. If it's strong price action with good volume, I will buy small shares the first 10 minutes assuming it's not some massive gap up, okay? It's gapping up 30 points. No, I don't wanna mess with it, YouTube. But here's a great real world tactic. It's a clean and simple base. It's gapping up through the pivot. How can I control risk? What can I do? Number one, it's a clean and simple base and it's got great earnings or sales and a high composite rating. It's a leading stock and a leading group. Those constraints are satisfied, okay? I really mean that. It gaps up. You could buy it but buy less shares, buy less shares, control risk, and then watch it on the 10 minute chart. Don't go to five, watch it on the 10 minute chart and see how it acts. If it really starts to drop below the lows of that first bar, be very careful. You could possibly have to sell at least a third or a half of your shares. The best ones just push away. It's gapped up huge. 
Watch it on the 10 minute chart. Look at the, look at the price action on that 10 minute chart and look at it combined with volume confirmation. If that first 10 minute bar is like this, the first 10 minute bar is like this, there's the range of we'll, we'll call it $2 and it closes right here and then it starts to lift up and volume's good, you could buy some. And what would be your stop on this first 10 minute bar? If it takes out the lows of this bar, you'll need to sell at least a third or half your shares to protect yourself. Also remember, speaking of protection, because it did do a big gap up from the previous bar. Okay, here's two price bars. Buy less shares. Many people think, oh God, I can make a lot of money. I can make a lot of money. We have to control risk too. And monitoring share size keeps you in the game forever. And overall, be very careful buying big gap ups. Very careful. I rarely buy them. I'll wait. I'll wait. Perfect. Good. Perfect, Pat. Well, I think that's unfortunately all we've got time for, but thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you all for the interaction in the chat. Some great questions were asked. And shout out to Alex for just donating $200 to St. Jude's. Thank you so much. Um, and if you're enjoying the stream, we're keeping this completely free. But if you are finding value in this, please go ahead and donate uh, just a few dollars to the fundraiser. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, with that, Pat, thank you once again. And next up, we've got Brian Shannon, one of my favorite traders to listen to. Um, so stick around for that. We'll be coming up at around 1045. So Pat, thanks again for coming on and uh, being our first speaker of the conference. Really excited to have you on. Thank you, Richard, for asking me. I'm honored. I hope what I shared helps everybody. I appreciate it. You're doing a great job. All of you keep going. Have a positive mental um, mindset with this. It'll help you. Thank you all and take care of yourselves. Good job. Thank you. And thank you, Richard. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll be Take right care, back. Brian. If you're enjoying the stream, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll be right back with Brian Shannon at 1045. See you there.